Yeah. 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 Main or if it's something we did, we probably are. That's why I was asking. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let me look at it now. Maybe. Yeah, I, maybe it thought I was somewhere else. Well, that's the Just not quite ready yet. Commit on that processor family yet. What? Did you get your book read? Oh. I'm in yeah. chapter three. I figured it, it, you would be like so in four, ten pages in, and uh, well, I I read before I go to bed, so that's that's the hard part. Well, but it's very well written. Shane doesn't talk about Linux. Oh, I I didn't even get a chance to read it. I've got yeah. I've got a stack but of books I, I, I need to read. Android. It's fine now. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's fine. So apparently it was my connection uh, somehow. And I was not on a process. Testing the configuration. Okay. Okay. Super Don, did you remember to ask Lee or? Yes, I did. Okay. He said yes. Cool. He's going out to get a power cord because he realized his. So there's a new one of these coming out, like next month. The new what? Chromebook? The Acer series here. It's going to be the exact same size, better processor, full HD. Mm. Still two hundred bucks. Right? Two hundred here and two hundred there. No, no, I, I know, but I mean, it's just like what was it ten years ago? Two grand here, two grand there. Yeah, I cannot believe. I remember, I bought a Percom terminal. Percom, holy cow! <laughs> yeah, I think I paid six hundred bucks. <laughs> I guess I'll crawl under the table to plug it in. But yeah. that's the way things were then. Yeah. I remember the good old, back in the good old days. I, I, my first, my first uh, big expense was uh, <laughs> first thing I bought was my big you really use a power light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mean on left to show it's looking hot? Just on the on right to show it's hot. Yeah, I like that idea. Oh, there it is, right there. That was my first big expensive purchase, getting that IBM coprocessor on the GPU. Oh, yeah. It was ninety-six, six hundred dollars for a graphic card. <laughs> yeah, I remember going. I ran for a little while. Do those? Oh, Man, no, no, this, this was two D. None of that crazy 3D stuff even happened yet. <laughs> well, see, I didn't realize how good they were. This guy sitting there looking, he's going like, well, I got so-and-so. And he's like, well, that's the very one I got. He's playing some game. He's going like, I can't I'm sorry? Do that. Number nine. Number nine. Uh, there were a lot of, this was the only card that BOS supported at first. Remember BOS? Sure. This was the only card. Wow. What did I have? It was a processor here. Oh, it was crazy fun. Yeah, it was fun. Let me see. Any news here? There you go. No, the next one. Microsoft. Okay. <laughs> no. no, no, no. It's not just powered. It's orchestrated. <laughs> orchestrated. How many of you guys are familiar with SCCM? SCCM. Yeah. Software configuration control net. Yeah. What they have it running on Linux? It's no, they, I, they don't even use it. Oh. Uh, what was that? Uh, what did I do with this stuff? 
Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, that was Monday. Oh, I thought it was today because they just put it up today. Yesterday was the Lunar New Year. Yeah. My favorite find of the week, guys. When, when was the new moon? Wasn't it Monday night? Yeah, I, I have a co-worker who was uh, off work for it, so it was Monday. The, um, ben? Mm-hmm. And that's something a lot of people, if they don't do astronomy, never gets how the new moon is north. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone care to vote? I have ballots. Anyone who hasn't already voted? Well, you can vote again if you want to. Vote early, vote often. <laughs> Vote well, early, vote often, vote for Stan. No, vote for so it doesn't matter you know, on so much how much you vote, how many times you vote, or anything. It's the last time you vote. 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 I just, I don't know, because I've got older, I just don't feel the masses of people. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's worse. You vote, you get a free pen. <laughs> oh, cool. Talk about a bribe. <laughs> that is so, so incredibly cool. Does everybody have a nice fun day today? Did anybody break anything today? Would you fix it, Lee? Uh, it's NASA Access Database in Ohio that was thrown a jet air. People are using Access still? Yeah, I installed it 12 years ago. I got it supported. What's the problem? <laughs> so, did anyone else fix anything today? Tried. Can you describe what happened with quick interview? It broke. It's Access. Well, it, it, there, there, there was a power failure. And apparently it mangled it. Mangled it. Every time we tried to come open it, it came up with jet database error. Another user is trying to open the same resource. Okay, so the, little, the little lock metadata wasn't set properly. <laughs> and you, you and you couldn't open it at all. There was no way to open it. And uh, tried to do a compact repair on it, didn't work. So I said, "Where's your backup?" He said, "We don't have any." So I had some backup stash from three years ago. Last time I was up there. Four years. Nothing's changed since then, so it's not a problem. Right? <laughs> That's that got them going. Yeah. How's it going, Stan? Oh, fine. I, I had a system once that that it uh, failed on uh, or car car. I was going to try to come back up. It, it wouldn't let anybody log in. And, and what happened is, it, when a system shuts down, it, it throws out that no login file. Okay. It, it, and. It didn't properly erase that. So that was keeping everybody out. So the only way you could bring it back up was go to the actual terminal and, and log in as root, and then come and erase that file. So that would have been hard for you to do, right? Yeah, it would. Yeah. Not if you were using guacamole. Really? Well, that, luckily, I had team viewer to one of my systems in the office, which is actually their system. And then I could VNC from there to the box if we could. Yeah, so how, how do you set up Windows to use a serial console? You know, I didn't say serial, I said VNC. No, I know. Have any of you guys ever set up uh, Linux clusters or anything using serial consoles? I see the option a lot every time I install BSD. So you can. Um, on a lot of uh, BMC, on, on a lot of BMC controllers or IPMIs or ILOs or whatever you want to call them, you have the option of exporting your serial connection out over SSH, and so you can have hardware access to blades and yeah. all kinds of fun stuff. And, and actually, I think you even accidentally have a slide about it in here today. <laughs> Just happen to have a slide. To be super awesome. So, so no other cra big crazy news. Let's buy some time so I don't have to talk that much. <laughs> oh, I got a question for everybody. Seven. The answer is seven. Well, it was 42. And, and, a question, and the question is, 
How do you keep a share alive in VirtualBox? How do you keep a share? Where you, where you mount a, a local system folder via shared folder? Don't use VirtualBox. Same with VirtualBox users. Yeah. Yeah. What's what's the guess for us? Uh, guess is Windows Seven host is Linux two C thirteen one. What was the question? Um, I don't have experience with that host. With that guest, I haven't had an issue on a Windows 7 host. Have or have not? Have not. Have not. Okay. Yeah, I, I was trying to do it. Uh, it's a volume. It's a backup from uh, from a customer's PCs that was so infected with malware it actually got the uh, uh, BitLocker triggered. Mm -hmm. But luckily, I pulled the backup before that. You get those guys to sign in, or no? no. And uh, you know, so I, I sucked off a file copy to a USB drive. And I'm trying to scan. Well, first off, AVG wouldn't scan it, so I threw that out. And I go over to Bass, at least I would scan it. But the most I could get through is about 45 percent of the stuff. You know, the, the, the drive, the share would become inaccessible. So this afternoon, I copied everything onto a local folder on the hard drive. So on. Oh, you know, there's something going on with that version of VirtualBox or something on the system. I don't know. I think we're going to finish it. Um, it's definitely true that some version of, versions of VirtualBox work a lot better than others. <laughs> Even in, you know, the last six months. <coughs> so you might want to take a quick look at mm -hmm. VirtualBox 1 and see if there's something obvious about, it. about it. oh yeah this version has this problem yeah well i i posted on the forum this afternoon after i copied the file and tested it yeah. i'm not sure what the other option would be is what kind of what kind of share is it what protocol nfs or samba or the virtual box they have their own protocol for sharing system folders oh for sharing system folders right yeah. So basically, you can mount a folder, a, oh, oh, a directory yeah. structure on the drive, as a drive letter under Windows. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't tried that. Yeah. It's also kind of fun. I set it out at the airport last weekend with SUSE 13.1, and I actually got it to mount a USB drive. Here, here's a trick: if you ever use VirtualBox and want to use USB, you have to install extensions twice. Yeah, once on the guest and once on the host. Same extensions. That's what gives you USB access. <clears> That'd be a fun topic. There's a there's a USB over IP stack in the kernel now. That'd be fun to play with. Hmm. I, I do have another topic. So if if you want VS time, please. We have a Dell 2900. Oh boy, it's gone downhill fast. 2950 or 2900? 2900. Old, huh? Well, I mean, it's about five years old in there. I got an EPC about five years ago. And there is the weirdest damn problem on that thing that is driving me through. Luckily, I don't have to troubleshoot it tonight because the guy there was supposed to leave me a system up with Team Zero and didn't do it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, got a remote tunnel run into it. It's worked for five years, and it worked for five years before that on the old box. No problems at all. All of a sudden, a week ago, or probably maybe 10 days ago, uh, we don't monitor it, so I didn't know it was down. And Monday, I got some weird emails. He was in there playing or poking around trying to figure out what was going on. So I called him and said, hey, who's this? It's a new guy. Anyway, come to find out that uh, the reverse tunnel will come up. You can hit return all day long, CDs, but as soon as you do something like an LS or an LL, LL it's hung. It's hung as in, it's actually physically hung or it's hung as in? Hung, not you're not getting anything back across the wire. Right, and you can't push anything up either. It, it goes into some unknown state. So you want to check slash dev SHM and slash ver temp real fast. Sounds like you have a standard output redirection problem. So basically, somebody's. But I can log in from a local machine with no problem. 
local machine with no problem? Right. So there's something on the wire? Okay, yeah. It, it's, it's something on the wire, but it's between that machine and the outside world. But the kid up there put a laptop on that network cable and had no problem. Gateway then? I'm at a loss. I'm, I'm shooting in the dark. I had him replace the switch. I made him replace all the cables. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lot, lots and lots of variables there. Yeah. Uh, I ran ETH, ETH tool. There's no uh, errors detected on the interface. So if you if you do a um, Oh, how should I say this? If you do a looking glass, so you look from both sides, you're going to do a trace route into each other and make sure the traces match up um, the last three hops on each side. Okay. So that way you can find out if you got a loop or something. Well, I mean, from the same switch on the same wire, there's no problem. Right, but what if your server is gatewaying past that switch. Okay. See what I'm trying to say? It could be just one switch or one router beyond that, so everything works locally. I had it set to the firewall box, or mm -hmm. to the firewall box of the outbound. Yeah, because like, so like, let's just imagine you have a large infrastructure and you have spanning tree enabled, and all of a sudden you know, you're doing something and it just kind of disappears for a moment. Yeah. And it just will not come back until spanning tree has completely reset itself. That may be the problem with Verizon. Uh, totally separate issue. Mm -hmm. I run a ping job on Amber to test mm -hmm. our gateway in the IEOS box in the shop. And every few weeks, <laughs> it goes down for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Back up. Okay. Enterprise. I, well, I, I've been beating on Don for two weeks. I want him to grab a trace route when the link goes down. Mm -hmm. And that way we can see where the point of failure is. And that way, Hosterian like, you know, can point to blame at whoever the provider. Yeah. He's been pushing it to do one or two other things too at the same time. Yeah, like, like fix Sam no problems. Yeah. So, Don, what's the holdup? What's the holdup? Mm -hmm. Are you done yet? Fixing the Samba problems? All, every, the world's problems. And everything. All of them. All of them. Everything. Oh. Uh, I got some solutions. Okay, Welcome to the party, Gary. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> hmm? No, no, it, it's, it's helping me uh, buy time for my extremely fast presentation. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a couple of questions. Does okay. anybody know of a does anybody know to you how to use a smart card with Red Hat with the command line only? No do we. So it's just an HID device, or, or do you want to actually run the challenge response out to it? Um, yeah, it, well, it's a DOD TAC as well. Okay. Is. So it's a smart card. And all I can find is ways of doing it with the GUI. And now the servers have GUIs on them. And the question is, if you put a GUI on it, you basically increase the attack surface. So you're getting one increase of security at the same time you're decreasing another. So I was just curious if there was a way to do it with the command line. Um, another possibility is with the is with the, um, the login manager and you basically have it and then have it running long enough to verify the pin mm -hmm. and then drop into a command prompt after that, not start X. So I would, I would look for anything that's like, I think it's it'll be anything under SSO for single sign-on, because that's okay. what the cards are typically used for, single yes. sign-on. Um, and I would, I don't know if you can do like a search for like non-workstation type thing, just to kind of tear away all those desktop oh, applications yes. situations. Okay. No, but yeah, I'd, I'd, just, I'd hover around the single sign-on topic because that's where you're going to find your most value. Okay, I've work. looked at pretty much looked at Red Hat's all of their. So if you're using what is it? IPA is the 
what's the server? Are, are you using any time for a central auth or local only? No. Okay, you're using, okay. Well, you'd have to be for a card. Are you using IPA? What kind of directory service are you using? Well, we are going to integrate it into Active Directory Central. Okay, so my so I've actually got the, um, I have the server, so they will, so they will authenticate to Active Directory, which is basically what we wanted was so that. But does it does it do the Kerbos? Are you yes. doing Kerbos too? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it does the it does the Kerberos. I would uh, send an email to the discuss list, and we can. Uh, Try to answer that later. Okay. Because there's been a whole lot of traffic on the discuss list lately. Sarcasm. <laughs> Watching the list. Actually, the least had folks today. Really? Yeah. Where were you? They were all about one topic, right? <laughs> well, you did. You said traffic, not topics. Um, I, I'm on other mailing lists, and they have traffic. Yeah. <laughs> you have another question if you want. Yeah. Let's let's ask questions and and. Does anybody know of a reasonable Samba password manager without LDAP and hopefully without Webman? Password manager. Or you can point the user at a, the local admin that knows how to use a mouse at a link to manage users and passwords on Samba. Do you want to throw them to a directory service? No. To a way to manage the Samba password instead of doing it on the command line of the SMB password. I was going to recommend them. <laughs> I can't imagine using Samba without a directory service. I don't even know why why you would have something that is not authenticating Upwork. So if you have two workstations in your home and you want to do Samba sharing between them, you have a directory service? Sure. And a CA, of course. <laughs> I think you just lost him. Is he smiling? <laughs> <laughs> so I gave a talk about Zintial a while back. Yeah. And Zintial has a directory service and a CA. So not only is your you have a password and a directory service, it's also encrypted with a central authority for your certificates. Stan. I use my PCs at home with Samba to share stuff. <clears throat> and I don't know what you're talking about when you say directory service. Um white light directory access service X. 500. Do you remember X500? I could spell it. Okay. <laughs> hey, do you remember the LDAP sequel where you're going to make them running? Yeah. That's a directory service. <laughs> Why do you need that? Hmm? Why do you need that? Because it allows you to change your password on all your systems at once. If you only have two, it probably there's really probably not much point to it. But if you have an office full of people, then. Okay. Well, let's. Okay. If you only have two machines, why not change the Samba rule? To allow unauthenticated access from that IP address. Are they both Linux? I occasionally hook up a Windows box. <laughs> and so. Well, if they're all Linux, who needs Samba? Just use uh, uh, SFTP. I prefer to use a Samba because sometimes Windows comes into the picture. Okay. Okay. Um, but there are some other tools like the um, the NAS solutions. Um, you know, all of these, you know, home-based NAS servers, and they all have the capability of doing that and then having user management built into it. So, um, yeah, but that's for the NAS. You're saying they'll provide uh, LDAP? What I'm saying is that all of your users can log into that and you have centralized user authentication. So that means they wrote a custom rule for doing it. Yeah, but, well, they've already covered it. And even if you don't want to use that NAS solution, you can go to the source for that NAS solution and see what they do. Maybe they just brought in a package that does what you're looking for, actually. This ain't billable. Hmm? This ain't billable. <laughs> I can't go develop a solution and nobody pay for it. I, that, wa I, that wasn't part of your question, though. <laughs> you didn't say that. I am adding it. Okay. I got, I got enough stuff on my to-do list that I don't need another development right now. Okay. I wasn't saying that you would have to write anything. I'm saying that sometimes you can go to a open source software project that does half of what you want. Look at how they did it because maybe they imported a library from somebody else that already did it. And you don't know the name because it's called Willy Wonka's authentication system. Yeah, well, I'm, 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 it's such a common problem mm -hmm. 
that nobody I know wants to use LDAP, much less me, because it's it, it breaks too much thing, breaks too many things. You know, unless you've got you know, 100 machines or something like that, where where are your benefits? <clears throat> And it just irks me to know when every time I have to go in there and create a system user, create a SAMA user, and add a password. You know, there's, those are, there are three steps. You know, I, I can do a system user than you asked, but you can't do SAMA user. I wonder if there's a user creation hook or you can throw a profile like Etsy profile D, have a SAMBA so the first login automatically creates a user. Oh, sure, you can write something like that. <laughs> what kind of login are you talking well, about? Wait a minute. First login or sample login? No, no, no. The first time you log in and you load your profiles up, yeah. you can have a, is it your first time? Yes, create a sample user form. Well, these are people who never are not going to be. Well, I, you know, I, I, I can do the, do the command line, but mm -hmm. the thing is, I'd like to be able to give it to a user's administrator mm -hmm. and say, okay, here's how you have a user. And I've used Webman in the past, and, you know, it's free and it's neat too tool, but it's like an 800-pound gorilla for one simple problem. In fact, I've still got webbing on servers I built 15 years ago because it's, it's the simplest way to, to tweak some tweak tables in MySQL. That's another fun topic. Um, a GUI for localized user apps. It doesn't have to be GUI. I settled for a web UI. It's still gooey in my head, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. No, just, just I think a web UI would be much preferred, right? Well, I would. Yes, would be fine mm -hmm. if there were if there were a way to do it. Yes, and where you could check check a box next to you and say make him a sample user. We're talking about the ASCII. Yeah, yeah. ASCII mm -hmm. and that way, uh, yeah. Um, so, is, is there no PAM module for Samba? Good question. Yeah, there is. And you can, in an, in an environment where you you have users <coughs> are doing both, you can tie those things together so that when they change one, it's like when they change their login password, they change the sum password once you get created the first time. Creating so the first time in that situation, though, is unfortunately still a two step process. Yeah. You know, it fixes the change issue, it doesn't fix the create. Okay. At least that's been my experience on the dead one. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm bet, kind of guess there's going to be some like NSS or some other plugin or probably a PAM extension that will let you change something. I wonder if there's a PAM web UI. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I looked up on the sample website and there was like eight or ten tools with them. I, I never, had never heard of any of them. So. so Fun topic in and of itself. Well, um, does anyone else have anything they want to uh, burn five more minutes for on? Stan? I had a, a question. I was looking at some really old documentation about compiling open SSH. And it, you want to talk about, uh, when we get to it, you can just write. It talks about putting uh, you know, a user ID in the password file for. Uh, the Daemon mm -hmm. open SSH, and it said that the spec that you needed to put the slash, uh, what site in slash uh, no login or false, or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that also it said you needed to put that in the Etsy slash shells file. Okay. If that does not go in the Etsy, uh, if it doesn't appear in the Etsy uh, slash shells file, is that a problem? Mm -hmm. So I, I most don't. modern distros, whenever you set a no login, you'll point them to uh, uh, bin false now. Okay. Or maybe it was bin, bin false. Right. So so whenever you see no login, you're thinking about you know about uh, five five ten years ago. Um, the shells. I'm wondering if that's platform specific, and if it's loaded via a bash load, a profile load, or um, a seashell load or a cron, so a KSH. So if it, I think shells might be a holdover from KSH or something. Because I remember 
way in the distant past that there was a login that I had that had the wrong, it had, it could have been uh, slash bin slash no login or something like mm -hmm. that, and it was spelled wrong. And if you tried to log in, it would give you a bash shell. Wow, security. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> boom. Um, but that was in the, the way distant past, and I, I haven't gotten around to doing any research on it to test it out, but I noticed that in them, or excuse me, in the Linux Mint, that that, whatever it was, was not in the, the SC shell file like it was, was, I thought it was supposed to be. But this was really old documentation mm -hmm. uh, that talked about security. <laughs> oh, and, and, and I think I think the old documentation is the bane of our existence, you know, because you'll go to look for something and it's whether this is 15 year old information, 20 year old information, or information from last week. 2009? Yeah. Oh, a few things have changed, you know? Anything else there, guys? You want me to get started blathering? Well, let me ask again does anybody need to vote? I want to vote. Well, yeah, I want to vote. You can vote again if you voted before. <laughs> vote early, vote often. Vote for Stan. No, don't vote for Stan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, if you have to vote again, we're probably going to all vote for you. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, you know, I've don't been taking all these ballots home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but you won't know what's in them until somebody's looking over your shoulder. So, so Stan is doing hand, hand writing analysis on all of us. So check your bank accounts, guys. <laughs> is he going to put something in it? <laughs> yeah. If if your accounts if your if your balance is low enough, he might feel sorry for you. Put two cents in. Um, okay, well we're gonna jump over here and here and here. <coughs> this presentation was a new record, twelve minutes. I spent twelve minutes doing this presentation. Okay. I thought you meant going to take twelve minutes to talk about. I'm going to try to get 22 minutes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's where your picture of your new wood shop? Um, my new wood shop is a little cold right now. <laughs> what, you don't have insulation in the basement? No. Oh, okay. That's fancy stuff. New fangle. Don't try to do a presentation in 12 minutes, okay? So I'm going to talk about guacamole, which, as many people have found out, is very difficult to search on the internet. <laughs> and searching for things like guacamole Linux don't always help because it's a relatively cross-platform. However, we were going to verify exactly how cross-platform it was. Uh, Michael here was talking earlier about it. Uh, um, the guacamole RDP first hit. OK. RDP was a new feature in 8.3 and 8.2, so before that, searching was even more difficult. Um, Guac-dev.org is open source software, because that's what we talk about at meetings like this, is open source software. It is a clientless remote desktop gateway. So that's a whole lot of words, but they're all necessary in that statement. And we'll get to the details about why in a moment, Stan. <coughs> but it uses HTML5, and it really uses HTML5, so it's pretty awesome. That's W-I-N there. What is that? <laughs> For the win? Yeah. It's the opposite of lose. Oh, OK. And, and exactly what does clientless mean so here? Sorry, Stan, that's a marketing. We're going to get to that real quick. Okay. Okay, so it has some components to it, okay? One of the components is a server. is written in C, and it translates local and or remote um, desktop um, sharing tools. So for example, there's VNC, which I hope all everyone's familiar with. Spice is relatively, eh, it's about a five-year-old protocol, but it's pretty widely used for virtualization. SSH, which is not necessarily what you think of as a desktop tool, but why not add it to the mix? RDP, which is Remote Desktop Protocol, I can't remember who Microsoft bought it from, but I'm sure they didn't write it themselves. 
And there's probably going to be some other uh, protocols that are going to be added in as things grow. Um, you're going to see some proprietary uh, stuff like, for example, IPMIs that use a proprietary version of VNC so that you can log on to your server remotely. Dan, did you understand all those things? Sort of. Ask questions, please. Okay. IPMIs. IPMIs? That's a wonderful That's question. Thing. So I'm sure you guys all remember having the old KVM switch to switch back in between two computers. So, so IPMI is something that is literally soldered onto the motherboard. And it usually has the added benefit of having a little power button so that you can remotely turn on and off the ATX power. So, Stan, every computer should have it, but it doesn't. Ah, key. SB uh, ATX motherboard, right? Well, Here. Are, are, soft there, power. are there any non ATX systems out there? Well, out of 28 in Iraq, there's only one that, that is ATX. The Compu Living Computer History Museum does not count. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a museum or operational? Hey, I've, I've, I've got eight, hey, three, six. If you've boxes. ever been to the museum out in California, there, right next there's, to Google's there's office. Here, there's one right here at Umsel, too. Oh, okay. The one out in California, all the machines work, though. Yeah. So, okay. What did you just call <laughs> so, so uh, for example, I've got a lot of server motherboards I use for proving out things at home. And what's really nice is that I can just log on to a little web page and click a button and turn it on, hack away, click a button and turn it off, and not have to get up and burn calories. Mm -hmm. Or when it's home, just log in remotely and reboot it. Hmm? Or when it's home, log in remotely and reboot it, turn it off. For well, I, I don't really have systems hang very often, ever. So, so it's Windows again. That's, I'm fortunate. I don't have that problem. Really? Mm -hmm. You don't run Windows? You don't have any? I don't run Windows, period. Okay. So I don't run any of these other proprietary things either. So, um, so that's what an IPMI is. Does that answer your question, Gary? Yeah. Have you ever used an IPMI, Gary? Yep. Yeah. What type of IPMI did you use? I don't know what type of one. Was it an ILO or was it a true IPMI? Or? Okay. Well, we'll jump back to the talk then. Okay, so it has a client, and this is where it kind of gets funny because the client is just a web service that lets you download an HTML file. A CSS file for styling and then some JavaScript and that JavaScript does all the work of making your desktop appear in your browser there's no flash there's no monkey business it uses HTML5 canvas to literally draw all the artifacts for you on the screen and we're going to do a demo so you're going to get to see this in action so is there a repeater? I'm sorry? Is there a repeater? Repeater. Well, like VNC, how, is, you, have to have, you have to have a man in the middle to be able to connect the machine line firewall. This is designed to use TLS by default so that you can run this service on a public facing internet connection. So there's no repeater? Well, I, there is a proxy on the There is a proxy, Damien, in the server here somewhere. And it's in there somewhere. There is a proxy service that might do what you're asking about, but the intention of this is to be secured across the internet. So. Yeah, but no, the, the, the point is there's a lot of machines that aren't public facing where it would be useful. 
So your public facing web service could talk to a private network. That server that we talked about first, this can actually connect to any th kind of thing. So you could have a VPN for this server to connect to the v VNC session mm -hmm. and it and translate it and send it up to the web interface. So yeah, you could segment them out across the network and have an allowance for each other. Yeah, because you normally you have to have a repeater in the middle for VNC. You know, we got a repeater in the shop, not using it anymore. We hadn't set that up a few years ago. And then lately I've been using Team Viewer more than anything because I can open Team Viewer on my Linux box and have Windows box on the other end. Super Stan? What's the WAR? A Java War? Also, if I understood it right, it just uses HTML's calls. In other words, you can get out the main code that's got other things wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the war in Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, 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 well. So application was not part of the original name there. Get a good laugh on that one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> does that make sense to you, Stan? Yes, it does. You know what a jar is, right? Yeah, it's a Java, Java stuff. What is it? Notice how there's no application in that name either. Yeah. Uh, and my second question, does it have to be Tomcat? Um, in theory, you could probably run this under a lot of things, but Tomcat's probably going to be the de facto best choice. Um, you could run it under EAP, or you could run it under WebSphere. I mean, there's a lot of options. I'm running this under Tomcat 8, if it matters to anybody. So, Okay, so the Java War is running on Tomcat 8 right now. Uh, it connects to the client. It connects the client to the server, and it doesn't actually do a whole lot of wrangling. It literally lets the translation of the server kind of map straight through to the client, but it all is using um, HTML5, Canvas, and reactive design JavaScript stuff. So it's lots of fun. It manages devices for you so that you can also have like a bazillion desktops or bazillion servers that you want to connect to, and you can just go to a web page and click on it and get it. Um, and it's designed to be public facing so that you can host it on the internet. Yes, I know. It's scary to put Java on the internet. Any questions here? Questions Questions make my talk longer. Okay. So is it the server that's going to keep track of all the RDP sessions? Yeah. So, so the server does the connection, yeah. but it translates everything into like a, a JSON stream so that it basically will redraw everything. So it tells you how to draw. It says draw the rectangles here and and make them this color and you know make sure Facebook's blue is this color. So so what makes this noteworthy? The noteworthy parts are that this is remote access to servers, desktops, whatever. Whatever. That's horrible, Andy. Okay. Whatever. HTML5 works on things like iPads that don't have Flash. So for a lot of uh, the old IPMIs, they would require a very special version of a Java um, plug-in to the browser, which was really annoying. Some of them would use Flash, and they would complain if it wasn't Adobe Flash. Um, I've seen, um, what was the other, cold, not Cold Fusion, but Macromedia. There were some systems that used some version of Macromedia plug-in to try to let you control things. Super annoying. And the server does not have to be on the host. can be central to all devices. So a server could be sitting in a server in your data center and then connect to any number of a thousand different hosts for you, and you can set up the rules to allow that for that particular host. 
and because the authentication still happens on the target, wipe is good. <clears throat> Questions, comments? You just guys just want to see a demo, don't you? <laughs> so, Super Lee, can you punch that in your old iPad there and we'll uh, see if we can't make a mess? By the way, this uh, iPad is only used for four flights, so I am not an Apple person. <laughs> it's only used for what? Four flights. I think it's on Safari. Tell me whenever you got that. Uh, hang on a second. I gotta get your Wi-Fi first. So the client is running on this machine right here. On top of it. Yeah. On, on, on top of that. Your clock. So this is where the client. See, is. see, that this is the so funny it. thing. Technically, the client runs inside the browser. So it's client list to an extent. So it's actually kind of the, the 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 Tomcat server hands up the files, proxies request. It really doesn't do anything. Okay, so he's going to connect there. Tomcat's going to feed him the client. Mm -hmm. And then work. And then is the server running on that? No, no. Did you put slash guacamole? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I did, I did not take the time to put a proxy pass to make it short and sweet and pretty. So, and then is the server running on the same box? Or right now, I'm running everything on my laptop. But in theory, you could run this all spread out. You could have many servers. You could have many of the uh, the uh, um, web clients here, so just handing things out. There's a user <laughs> user Linux password should be Tux or something like this. You should see some options. Put the cursor in our fix that <laughs> um, If you want to, you can use your desktop to join in on the fun. No, it's Apple. So and then the RDP yeah. session is running, so he didn't see. And you're, you're, it's also on the same box, is that right? Yeah, so I'm using RDP. Five minutes to get a cursor in that or change one letter. Yeah, that's yeah. not successful. You change the keyboard. It doesn't like the mouse at all. That's the error message. Oh, yeah, so you have to leave the chain. Don't care. So, the crappy technology. what I have here is an RDP right session right. to my own desktop. This is all HTML. What was the login again? The, this? I got it. Which connection? Uh, the LAP V6 is the desktop there. And you can use lug, lug. So this is entirely drawn in HTML5. Can I connect at the same time? No limit to the number of people that can connect. <laughs> There's not a tab that you can go through. The cursor won't come up, or the keyboard, the keyboard, 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 keyboard. won't come up. Hmm. You're going to search Scratch board. Apple. Hmm? I'm going to try it with mine. If, if it won't respond, you can't get a keypad yeah. for the Google Box. <coughs> How do you move the mouse? You don't. You touch it. You touch it. There's no mouse. You make the insertion point. You just touch somewhere else. Yeah. You can you can get an insertion point. Well, I have to get it back to RDP here real quick. Yeah, I got the cursor here. It's just it's super annoying. I, I'm assuming that a Bluetooth keyboard would yeah, yeah. The the point here is this, <laughs> this is actually the HTML5 
rendering the RDP session login from my laptop. So the point is, is that you can use a device that does not support Flash or won't load like a Java plugin from 2005 or some specific thing. So I just wanted to ask uh, Don if he knew anyone had an I I, uh, iPad and we had one, he brought it in here. So while we can't really log in because we're having fun, um, this does show the rendering through this session. So this is an RDP session going from this, going from my laptop to the server that's also running on my laptop. From that server, it's going proxying through the Tomcat war there, and it is getting rendered on my browser only as HTML5. Pretty cool. If only Apple technology. So, also, this probably won't work on Internet Explorer, most of them. I got it on Chrome here. Let's see, what is the. Uh, Plug it up. Plug it up. Oh. Ooh. Oopsie. What's the address again? That's the. Oh, here you go. Oh, very, very, very. Yeah, close out a stupid mouse warning. Oh, stupid mouse warning. But here I am on the desktop. Yeah, and so you can go ahead and do fun things. Um, mm -hmm. And what's really crazy is that you could. Join uh, command, right? What's really crazy is that you could literally have your entire <laughs> infrastructure as tabs inside your browser. Mm. Can you imagine having a tabbed browser and having like all your servers and just click through them? It would be fun. And group them. It's pretty fast. Yeah, it's really fast. So I'm going to demo the other tool that I think is better. Other tools? SSH. Oh. In the browser, rendered as HTML5. Yeah. How do I get out of Now we got Stan's attention. How do I get out of the. Um... Just log out like your normal user logging out of an RDP session. Two lugs and five legends. Yeah, so as you can see, the HTML five through the browser. <laughs> If that's if that's messed up enough for you, or no, wait, wait, hold on. There we go. Let's get calculator. Let's see, let's find something here. We play video games. No. What if you tried to watch a video? What if I do this on, on the server? Here? On the server or yeah. just in general? Well, I'm seeing that I have a resolution issue right now. So you actually get that out on the web? Yeah, so I'm technically, this is HTML5 rendering HTML5. It's actually kind of funny. 
Yeah, I wasn't even going to go there. I was just I was thinking, well, maybe you can look at a video on certain. But you've gone beyond that. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have anything in here to help us out to be fun. Sorry, I did not think about that, by the way. <coughs> what are you guys doing, huh? I'm working on <laughs> You're working on what? Installing guacamole on the Ah, okay. Well, let's see here. Let's go and get. Ooh, that would be fun. Eat the eight. There you go. I got it. There, is that fun? That, that'll that stretch the HTML5 a little bit there. <laughs> Alright, let's see. So, it works. It works very well. It is pretty trim for going over the internet, is pretty much how it's designed. So, you can pretty much check your desktop from any web browser. So, you don't have to carry a computer. You can go to a library and log on to your machine. This client can exist in the HTML or like a browser plugin or something. No, no browser plugin. It's just using standard HTML5. Well, if you're at the library using your machine. I'm hoping what what is the library used for what browser? It's got you uh, County Library's got the Firefox and the uh, Google or, or Chrome. Okay, so I'm sure both of those would probably work fine. Is everybody trying in Chrome or Firefox or what are you guys trying in? Ice Weasel. Ice Sorry, Weasel. Okay. So Ice Weasel works. Yeah. That's Firefox. Yeah. There's somebody doing something. Are you guys all familiar with Ether8? Stan loves yeah, this. <laughs> it's great in public libraries, by the way. Are you guys like trying to uh, access the NSA's website from my laptop or what? <laughs> <laughs> so we will leave this open running and we'll jump back over to our talk here. Whatever page I was on, this page right here. So installation. So it's very well documented. Don's already started, right? <laughs> it's actually done. It's very wordy, but every word is important. Okay, so I did the install just before I came over here so, to show you how much you were driving up the not while I was driving, <laughs> but about about 15 minutes before I drove. <coughs> it's very well done. It's very well supported. It will work. Okay, I installed it from the source for the latest toys and stuff. Some of your distributions will have it as a package. Um, but I'm going to tell you that the installing from source is probably going to be the most up-to-date. The, the WAR file is downloadable, so you do not have to run Maven and compile Java. You can get an updated version of the WAR file. But the C program it is probably best if you just do a little make and make install. It's very low impact. Um, let's see if we can find a console here somewhere. Yeah, it's it's pretty low impact. I mean, let's see, 
So the C server is using more CPU than anything else. It's doing all of the translation from RDP into a stream that can go out over the network. So there's Etherape using relatively the same amount of processor there. Um, to use this, to use this, I uh, to use this, I just use a tool called XRDP, which will create an RDP server on your system. Um, it's kind of useful. You know, you guys can uh, play with that on your own time. So pretty low impact. Notice that like Tomcat wasn't a heavy hitter. It was the server during the transcoding that was a heavy hitter. So cons. One of the cons is, is that as new features get added, for example, audio supports working now. Clipboard sharing is working now. As these new features get added, you're going to be continuously recompiling and updating, <laughs> which is uh, kind of a con. I don't think anybody will stop in into the package repository at some point? No, no, it's in a lot of package repositories. Oh, it's yeah, just okay. that it keeps getting updated faster than a lot of distributions want to keep putting the gotcha. package in there. So it's the bane of awesomeness, you know. <laughs> So it's pros. Um, does anyone have any examples of how they might use this themselves? I have a proposal to do something like this. Um, I have a client who uh, makes uh, rather expensive uh, test equipment for analyzing and, and checking uh, large-scale electrical circuits. For example, suppose you want to check all the electrical circuits on an aircraft. Mm -hmm. So you know, thousands of connection points. They were, the software they have that controls this unit runs on Windows, and um, they were interested in the possibility of actually having some analyzers that people could that uh, author, the authorized clients, authorized user clients could connect to over the internet and kind of, you know, take take an analyzer for test drive. Mm -hmm. And the analyzer would be hooked up to some known uh, some known circuit and they could you know, see, you know, hey, this is what it looks like, this is how it works actually you know, actually seeing it. And so I wrote a proposal to use this software to make that happen. Did you yeah, decide yet? Yeah. Did you multiply <clears throat> your 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 proposal by 100 to make sure it fits their normal budget strategy? <laughs> it's hard to do sometimes, Ken, but it's fun. Yeah. Just, yeah. just add two zeros and ship it. The, the $800,000 solution is chosen every time over the $800 solution. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why they haven't gotten back to exactly. You. They exactly. think you're you're trying to lowball. I, I did a. I used to do a lot of woodwork, and I did a quote for a friend who was a head of a school, this private school, and he wanted me to do a quote just because he was getting frustrated with some of the stuff he did. And so I looked at everything, and I did a very fair quote. I did not lowball or highball or anything; just very fair. And my quote was. It was eight percent of the next bid. There were only three bids. One of them was AT and T. One of them was Verizon. One of them was me. And at that point, uh, the board of directors for the school had an absolute hissing fit, and they were just like, "We're, we're going to rewrite our request." <clears throat> and so they rewrote the request very specifically with a lot of details, and all of a sudden. The um, the telephone providers they got the hint that their first quote probably they all came down to something more reasonable, very very close to what I quoted, and so 
it's a personal history is just you know be be honest if you want but everybody else is multiplying by 100. I think actually things that may have more to do with your um, with their inability to with their inability to execute to get things done that they haven't already done before. Well, it also helps if you push the quote through a shell company with a great website and lots of people on the board of directors. Do you have one available? <laughs> <laughs> I keep two handy at all times. I see. Okay, so um, that's a, a pro is to use it in an industry where you need to have a lot of systems available. <clears throat> um, maybe you have them available to your customers. Maybe they're available to you. Um, and you guys, how's the peanut gallery over here? Do you guys have any uses for this? Well, you can always get out on part A. So you know where you're being blocked. That's good point. A pro is that this will go through most proxies because it's going over the internet. It's going over port, <coughs> port 80 or port 443. Yeah. So with some reasonable encryption, you can probably uh, make sure that you're not even watched. And they don't freak out. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that this was going through a lot of updates mm -hmm. right now, quite a few. Well, um, well, my question would be is if you installed a program for some customer, you know, is it very much likelihood that it would have to be modified because of some disco changes or something? No, so so there's some volatility here. Like for example, these are these are some issue ticket ticket volatility. So <clears throat> They've created 77 and closed 63 in the last 30 days, okay? Which is not like a thousand issue tickets a day or anything like this. This is two issues, 2.5, 2.2 issues a day or so. So it's not a lot of volatility, but what the problem is is that if you get a brand new feature that your customer wanted in the first place, yes, you're going to jump in there and recompile that real quick and get that. But that effort should be pretty low. It's something where these new features are things you actually really want. It's not like the annoying thing of, oh, there's another security update. It's more of, oh, I can get sound and USB working. Oh, USB over HTML, that would be awesome. <laughs> Can this be something on the cloud typically for a large company? Yeah, this would be a, a really great solution. A lot of people are using this for Amazon Web Service deployments so that they can organize all of their SSH sessions to everything. You can use that terminology. Yeah, get it in the cloud. Yeah. I'm on a PC with that cloud thing in it. Cloud thing. <laughs> you shorted it out in the cloud sort of built was out the side. <laughs> I'm trying to understand architecturally what the purpose of the client is. Why why that piece isn't just built on the same box as the server. You know, um, well there's a really great video that I guess the, the client knows where the server is, but the you know you you so as a the remote box is connected to the client, right? And so 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 the browser session is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Okay, it's retranslating everything back into HTML5, yeah, or back into the canvas. The Tomcat War is pretty much a proxy. Right. Okay. So and that's probably the purpose of having it it's, be its, its own box. It's or, trading things back and forth. It's doing HTTP protocol um, translations. It's basically <clears throat> handling things back and forth. So you might have um, actually I don't remember what the protocol is back and forth. So from the server to the proxy, you might have a non-HTTP protocol, and the proxy is just basically kind of manipulating and sending things off. 
So it needs to be so as between the client and server, you can have you can have many protocols, so you're gonna want to be in a DMC or a or, or, or bind file or mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the so things client. that the the Tomcat WAR can't be heavy because if it causes any latency in the traffic, then your mouse is gonna be dragging and you know it's not gonna feel right. So everything has to be as fast as it possibly can. What's the uh, communications look like between the server and the physical? <coughs> the server and the you said a server can connect and have more than one client behind it. In other, in other words, more than one. Um, so so target. so so the a a server can connect via VNC, RDP, and everything to many machines. Right, 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 right. Then the proxy server could probably sit in front of a server, or you could have multiple proxy servers sitting in front of a server, or you could have many servers. So it's kind of a relationship where you could load balance that out. Um, so in the client config, you can actually tell that to talk to multiple. Uh, right. So everything I did, everything I did right now today, it's all expecting that it's running on localhost. So as soon as I start putting IP addresses in there and telling it ports, the sky's the limit. So some uses is to uh, secure with SSL TLS for remote access to your desktop at home, to set up all of your routers, SSH connections in one place. So you can imagine if you had a whole bunch of like servers or whatever and you wanted SSH to them, but you don't want to like type in SSH, blah, blah, blah. You can actually just have them as options on the screen saying, hey, I want to log into that. So you could have all your connections here and you could have like, you know, hundreds of devices well named and you can just kind of scroll down and say, oh, I want to get to this one. So this would really be useful for a home network where you had the server on a box with, an out, with a uh, port forward from your little router at home and then all your internal machines had client configurations that you could use. And even if you had a nice simple VPN setup or whatever, you drop it in and you just kind of use it. You know, the the, the sky's the limit on the use of the uses for this. So. And it's also good so that you can support people, you can support mortals. <laughs> um, there is, in addition, an API. So you can have an API that talks to the uh, system and does things, crazy things, in multiple languages. So let's just imagine that you wanted to, I don't know, do an audio stream API call to a client server somewhere. So that you don't have to use that Tomcat WAR front end, you could, in theory, write your own system to interface with it. Yes, I know. My brain hurts too, Stan. Yeah. Brain burn. I was waiting for you to come up with your own uh, widget that would uh, look up uh, Ringo Malvado on Wikipedia for us. I'm not on I don't have any. That's not on Wikipedia. I removed that. No. Okay. Yeah. No. So it's at 095. Gringo Malvado's me, by the way. So. <clears throat> How come you've had a 095, 096? I've seen a number of different different issues here between the different ones you brought up. Version number to me? For 0 0.9.5, 0 0.9.6, and mixed up in different screens. Talking about parcels numbers? Yeah, the, I, I would assume it's uh, it's part of the package. And it looks like yeah, it's different it, parts or different sections. Oh, okay. Eight, nine, not six, and not five. And okay, so they're all kind of mixed in there. So, so here's the three main components, okay? Okay. So there's the client and the server, 
in the test suite to test a lot of this stuff, okay? okay. So you're only really concerned about these two. And yes, they do have different versions. But they all interact, yeah. They talk to each other, yes. Yeah. So the versions on this thing are 9.5 all the way down to 8.2. Okay, so the different pieces run down. Yeah, they're just different components. So you've got this that is written in Java and this is written in C. <coughs> this is also one of the few times you will see, um, see which one is that? Server. Get the uh, client, master, tags. I guess he does version them the same. Okay. I was wrong. They're version the same. The one thing I was going to ask is how old is this project? <clears throat> is, it, is it newer? Is there any concern as well as zero dot state? I've been following this for at least five years, so. So it is the full is there like a feature set that is sort of the definition of one not of as far as you know or how would they find it? I'm sorry, ask your question again? I, I, I was, how are they defining when they achieve 1.0 status? Is there a spec for what you think? Or? The roadmap, you mean? Yeah, roadmap. Yeah, roadmap. Oh. <gasps> They're trying to do some sprints, but that's not going to work. Um, as far as a roadmap, I'm sure it is. Well, you're going to hit one in point oh three, so as you're at the point nine five. So there's some forms. There's a project page. Uh, reporting commercial support. Hey, there you guys go. Commercial support. <laughs> Now you can go to your boss and tell you that tell them that cool open source project you saw last night has commercial support, <laughs> which is probably just one guy in his basement. He's not wrong with that. Yeah. Welcome, team. Yeah. Hey, it's a team. Yeah. It is a team, actually. There's quite a bit of people involved. Um, you contribute? Not yet. Let's see here. Let's that's the same thing. Doesn't have a ton of activity here. Three authors. Where's this thing at? Oh. Oh. Ah, discussion help. And when you're Googling it, if you go to Black Mode Desktop, you get much better hits. Mm -hmm. And the other one, most of them, then they're not about the thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really finding this quote unquote, um, what do they think 1.0 is? But I think that they're very close to 1.0, and I think that's why they're, they're racing up to it. The Portions that might be missing would be like mutual authentication TLS where you use trusted certs. That might be very difficult to configure with Tomcat. Um, maybe there's a GUI that's going to be built for managing users and connections in a more enterprise-y way. This, uh 
the connection is secure to TSL? TLS, you can use no. TLS, yeah. yeah. But it, that's your choice. Yeah. It's basically saying, here's an HTTP service, please encrypt it, yeah. but you don't have to. So I am not encrypting it right now. But you could. I could. I was going to ask that question earlier. I assumed it was all encrypted. Well, you would in a real installation, but this was the 12 minute. <coughs> yeah. Yoke's still running. Hmm? Yoke is still running. Yes, the yoke is still running. I like that. Um, but yeah, there, it looks like there's a forum with quite a few things going back and forth. Two way audio support. <laughs> You're going to Skype, right? So, looks like SourceForge is a little slow right now, but yeah. Um, let's see what we got here. In your estimation, it's not going to stall out if they keep supporting it, right? I'm sorry? Is that your estimation is that this project's not going to stall out? No, no. They've gone to the to the point of creating a consulting firm for commercial support. So they're in it, they're in it for the run. <clears throat> it's not like uh, well, that would be a hesitation. But yeah. Well, see, it's not like uh, Gary's unicorn dressing software that he started and nobody used. So. Okay. Please ask some more questions because that's all I got. Or maybe we're hungry. It's definitely, definitely more secure than Windows X. Windows. I mean. Uh, X Windows system, the, uh, XRDP. XRDP, and using uh, the secure tunnel to bring up an X Windows system, like SSH X to whatever the running traffic is, um, yeah. and faster, right? Okay. Yes. So the tool that I did use to connect my X sessions, my X org sessions, not X eleven, X org. What I used to connect them out was this package right here. Um, it should be in every distribution if you want to install it. But again, from what I read, it can actually do HTTP type. Also, originally that was the way it was built. In a what? Type without HTTP. Yeah. Instead of using a remote desktop or something. Yeah, it's. The sky's the, the sky's the limit on these new sexy projects. And as things get narrowed in, the scope, you know, so for example, let's just say that libraries pick this up to present a stable desktop to all the library computers. As soon as these scopes and these uses start getting narrowed in, then the scope of the project might start to narrow a little bit. Um, Maybe server administration is not its strong suit. You know, maybe it will be great in the third world to sit down and have a whole bunch of Weiss terminals doing RDP, you know, or, or some a whole bunch of Chromebooks, you know, logging on to machines. Well, this was running a Chromebook? I'm assuming this was well, this running a Chromebook, on a Chromebook, right? The HTML5 client, yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll, it runs on your iPad, it'll run on anything. So that's kind of that benefit. Well, I have to run something like that. Well, <laughs> if, if you actually had keyboard and a mouse Bluetooth on it, yeah. we probably could have used it very well, easily. There, there, I, I asked our mm -hmm. Apple friend if there's a way to force the keypad to show up. Mm -hmm. So, and that might be a possibility. Yeah, but I mean, so, so even in theory, though, you could be traveling with a, a third-party tablet from somebody and sit down and do your work. Or mm -hmm. you could have your computer stolen from you on vacation and, not lose and, and go to a library and be able to access all your stuff and get the phone number for the credit card company because they took your wallet. And you, so that, that capability is very nice. Um, <clears throat> not having to use a well, vendor's... Your, in your wallet on vacation? 
I'm 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 just I'm just yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that you're sitting down. To. Yeah, it's just an HTML5 Canvas session, so, and you can go incognito if you the, want. The only authentication then is the username and password, and that's not even uh, protected when that initially goes out over the internet. Yeah, it is. If, you, make if you set it up with security, yes. Yeah. It would be. So, yeah, if I had TLS enabled, it, this would be marvelously more secure. But here I am incognito mode. And I'll just jump into incognito mode. And this whole session could be secure. HTTPS. Yeah. From any library in the country. It's either my audio or the mouse. It does not like that at all. Where's Mr. Pink? Ooh, electronics, Arduino IDE. Hey, there we go. Would that be fun? Imagine doing that. Wouldn't that be fun to do some Arduino <coughs> programming? Where you could do some stuff for science. I don't know. I don't know what uh, things I have here that would be friendly for you guys. That was crazy. It was in this RDP session, and I started up with connectivity diagnostics. <clears throat> and it's running the connectivity diagnostics on my user account here that I'm looking at. So, so yeah, playing on localhost <clears throat> is probably not the best way to test this. <laughs> So what's your display variable? So what's my what? I did. It just made me wonder how. What is it considering this display? Is like your 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 display there, like colon zero dot zero or something, and then this is. Oh, so how, how, how did how did the, the software that you just launched end up on the wrong display? Because <clears throat> I'm logged in as my user here. In both places. I logged in via RDP as my user. Yeah. So I created a confusing situation. So yeah, it doesn't know that it should be the solution. Well, it, um, it's me telling Chrome to do things. So um, but yeah, as you can see, we get some scaling effects going on. So and you could be logged in, let's say, you know, for whatever reason you're you were logged into your machine remotely, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so or, I mean, you're logged in locally, and then when you log in remotely, you tell it to do something. If it displays it on the local, it's sort of interesting to see it over there and that to see how a sluggish. See what? To see how a sluggish pipe would affect it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that there are situations that might make this a little slow, but I mean, I think it's pretty quick myself. Yeah, I'm but you're all local net. Yeah, I'm I'm local, of course. Yeah. So yeah. That might not work here in the prime time for Netflix and. Uh, oh, your oh Netflix impact. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Well, if there's no fun questions, are we going to go to pizza early? It's really early, isn't it? Eight o'clock, sure. Mm -hmm. 
some somebody might be interested if we get home before 11 o'clock. As in people who are they going home to. <laughs> but I, I we, we we all know you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I was smarter than most. <laughs> no questions, comments? How many of you guys are going to go home, go home and play with this yourselves? Related to that, that I watched uh, a Nixie Pixel YouTube video. Really? Yeah, it's very nice. She presents herself very, very nicely. And she was talking about commands, mm -hmm. dash commands. So. Nixie Pixel? Nixie Pixel. Maybe I'm the only one in this room that's ever N-I-X-I-E, like the two. Actually, Drinking with Gingers is on right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have that streaming? It's all tight, but some of the guys might want to go to the uh, hybrid motorcycle car startup in California. I don't know if you saw that or not. D-L-I-O. Seven thousand dollars for a new vehicle. Are you, are you talking about? This is you're talking about something you could share on the discuss list. That's what you're talking about. Okay, well I'll put it there. Please. He was, he was trying to figure out things to kill time. The the UO the Testing. DI. Testing. No, no, it's, it's a it's small a, electronic vehicle. Well, it, it's a no cell regular gas motor. Oh yeah, you're right. That the, one's gas. Eighty nine miles to the gallon, <coughs> by the way. And, it's a hybrid between a motorcycle and a car. It's three wheel. Uh, where's Becky at? But it's cheap. I mean, six thousand nine hundred. Six thousand nine hundred. That's the Elio. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cheap. You know, I like the, I like the idea. It was supposed to. Yeah. Be, it was, we said it was safer, right? You could yeah, that's what they said. They said it's safer than. Oh, it'd be sort of weird to have some just one door, I guess. Yeah. But you can get over it. What do you do with the other door anyway? I mean, I never used the right hand door. I mean, that was supposed to be with what power windows and air conditioning and cruise control mm -hmm. and all that, less than 7,000. Yeah. Did it actually have the camera? Yeah, it's, it's enclosed. Yeah. yeah. Get out of it. Mm -hmm. it right. I mean, it looks more like a car, than, and, but they said the insurance would be more like a motorcycle, you which should be cheaper. Don't you know about it? Was it was yeah, in California? Yeah. No, I went on the website. I was like, hi. Yeah. Look at the screen, Bob. Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. I mean, I can see somebody you know, that commutes a lot. So that would be, you'd save a lot of money just in a few years. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, well, it's as big as you need. It's no bigger. Yeah, well, oh, it's more more room on the inside than you would have in a They said part car. of the uh, mileage comes from the fact that it's not as wide, so you don't have as much drag. Right. Which makes sense. It's but it's not, wider on the inside because you don't have somebody sitting next to you. Right. They're in behind you. It's a two seater. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd throw it out. Somebody mm -hmm. might like to look at it. Some of you rich guys might want to know, just go ahead and get it. Oh, I, like I think it's 2016 for it. Starts. That's what they're saying now. Beginning. Rich guys. <laughs> I pay you not two jobs. I mean, if you if so, if you if you give them that money, you'll actually get one. Uh, what you can do is re reserve one now. Yeah, it, it's going to be below seven thousand. You can have the different levels of reservations. The one they'll put down a thousand dollars now will get the first one. And of course, they're going to give you half of that back off of it. So if you put down a thousand now, they expect it to be delivered somewhere in February of next year. So you'll be a thousand five hundred off the, the price. And they're expecting to have some uh, different places where you can pick them up. I just thought it was real interesting. No, no politicians could somehow kill them. No, they're, they're actually working with the California. What is it you call it out there? The uh, EPA thing. So they'll even pass California. Car, California Air <laughs> Resources. Yeah, whatever. So they actually pass their emission standards. Yeah. But they're saying they don't have to pass the car standards well, because I technically it's a motor. It's not a, it's not it's a safe. car. It must it's be just, safe uh, in a car. Now, of course, is Pet, Pet Boys official assertion. Yeah, that, that's oh. who's going to do it. Oh, interesting. And yeah, the state is it. not. They're looking. But again, again, I thought it was an interesting concept. Yeah, the guy started out to build an alternative vehicle, and this is what he came up with. I found that accidentally a year or so ago. 
So they're getting ready to go in production in <clears throat> the end of the year here. Mm -hmm. Hey, wait, a couple of you guys do electronics at home, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is going where? Oh, going I saw a really some really cool stuff on sale for the uh, Missouri up in Hazelwood here. Oh, really? <laughs> These electronic service tables, they're going for cheap. And they have like five days ago. Yes, yeah, I need some more uh, storage space. Yeah. <laughs> I get so many storage to buy. Uh, buy all of them? Or? No, no, they're individually bidding. Oh, individual lot. Yeah. yeah, and so like, there's, I think there's like 10 of those electronics workstations <clears throat> I'll probably try to go get one myself where are they? these are all in Hazelwood oh okay Hazelwood yeah up there at the uh, record center probably mm -hmm. but then they did have some neat toolboxes somewhere down here Yeah, it could be, but I mean, that's what it's literally called. It's called an electronics yeah. technician yeah. workbench. But they've got a lot of them, and then they've got these. Um, Those are big brands that bid more on Stanley. Yeah, they've got these uh, little rolling tool chests and all right. kinds of stuff. So. They probably go for more, actually. Well, they've got uh, enough of them. But see, nobody's bidding on them. Five days left to go. Hmm. How long are you usually open for then? A month. A month, okay. I don't, yeah, it varies, but yeah. Government liquidations. I'm sorry, no, they're only open for. No tools. Are these guys, have they, these guys already bought it or are they selling it for off the channel? They are middleman, you pick it up at the government site. So you can even get trucks and stuff. Or thousands of pounds of brass and copper. I remember doing army surplus when I was a teenager. I drive my dad crude and I'd stuff. 30 refrigerators. Twenty five. Nine bed uh machine I never could uh, had to have three days. Never could get it to work. Yeah, if you it's it's just a fun thing. It's kind of off topic, but yeah, you can yeah, go no, and get not. you can go get the vehicles and stuff. And Maybe you could find the minute man. Ooh. Yeah, you posted that one. That would be so much fun to have. Wouldn't it? So my older brother, my older brother's got two twenty-five dollars. From a neighbor's house, parking it in the street. <laughs> yeah. hey, one of our neighbors used to park one in the, in the alley. So. Back to some more on topic things. What do we have for upcoming meetings? It looks like we have the Hazelwood Lug on the next Tuesday, the 24th. And then on the next Thursday, there's DevOps St. Louis, which hopefully I will make this time. Um, any other things coming up? And then we have. Well, Friday's so doing all the free meetup. They wasn't what is going on at the DevOps meeting? I believe it's a two B did with. Uh, yeah. That two, that TBD project has sure been going a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been for lots of speakers. Yeah, uh, a lot of people working on it. That's such an easy topic. Hi, I'm here. Let's go do something. Um, and then also the Steercom is coming up, and that's where you guys can come and volunteer to give talks. Yay! Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to show up. We will volunteer you. Yes. Bob, uh, you are giving a talk. The people who are at the Steercom meeting want to be volunteered to give talks. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be able. I'm, I'm going through some problems right now, and I figured. He's having a raspberry pie with Rowan. No, no, no. It's, 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 oh, there is a raspberry pie it's, 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 coming up March 14th oh, or something it's, it's, like that. Down to right. The pie day. Yeah, pie day. 31415. Which is um, Saturday, right? I don't see it on the list here. I don't 
Which sounds like this is now just driving something that's 20 miles a gallon. And you have to go up to, you know. Anything you else we should talk about, Super Stan? Uh, or President Gary? Anything else we should talk about? Vote early, vote often, vote for Stan. Yeah. Only vote for Stan where his name is written already on the ballot. <laughs> no, no, no. You mean put put Stan on all the blanks and check, check all your votes for that. <laughs> you mean I got to change all my votes now, Stan? Yeah, I'm here. Here's well, the the problem. Problem. <laughs> I'm calling him. Yeah, vote twice. I got the dollars for you. So seriously, he is categorizing all of your handwriting, okay? An ex-government employee categorizing handwriting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ever, ever He's learned to smile on Twitter. He's collecting all that data and uh, yeah. do a lot of analytics on it. it claims to be next why, to why do you course. think I've been collecting zip codes all these years? <laughs> <laughs> do you guys really put down your honest zip code? Sometimes. Sometimes. So if you want to get data mail. going in Alabama. If you want a piece of mail to arrive, I mean, kind of helps. That doesn't help either way. <laughs> <laughs> It's that's a, a, a statistical thing. There's, yeah. a, there's a probability curve. So yeah. no no other questions, comments, queries, quandaries, concerns. Everybody's hungry for pizza. Very, well, maybe one one of your okay. Uh, the uh, one two. 12.04, not the current LTS, but the one before mm -hmm. that. Um, does anybody remember having a lot of issues with uh, Samba? Mm -hmm. Where it would write, you know, internal error to its log? So the, the Samba that came with 12.04 LTS? Yeah. And it is doing what exactly? Well, you know, it, 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 it cores and then it, and it you know, the report does that, it writes internal error 11 into its log. Something along those lines, yeah. Yeah, well, that's all right. What, what, what's the setup when it does that? What does it do before it does that? Not much. <laughs> that's spontaneous crap, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, it was brought to my attention because I was logging into the system. It's not a major problem. Ooh. Something bad just happened. Did you didn't report this. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. I don't know how to track this stuff down. No, what I'm, I'm other saying. things you know that have gotten in front of you. Speaking of this, Emma, I'm not seeing a lot of like crazy hits on what you're mentioning. Right. Well, Could it be a configuration setting or something that you've changed from the default? So, for example, if you did like a um, copy your config and did a uh, dpackage reconfigure, brought back the original. And compare to see if something like a comma got in your way. You know, it's, it's entirely possible. This is a this is a new setup. Um, what I did is I copied a the copy of some from a from the from Debian system, mm -hmm. and then you know changed all of the stuff that didn't you know that didn't apply here. Okay. And so it's entirely possible that I, you know, yeah. put in or left out a comma. But at the time, it seemed like, oh, this is pretty straightforward. And, and in fact, you know, <laughs> it wasn't that it didn't work at all. <laughs> you know, I, I could, in fact, see and write to the disk drive that I want access through, well, you know, the directory tree that I want access to. I've got a I've got a really great funny comment somewhere. I'll have to remember to find it and send it out to the list. But uh, a guy had a large uh, DNS infrastructure set up, and he uh, and it, um, the zones weren't loading right. And he did a word count of how many 
opening braces and how many closing braces. Mm -hmm. And there was 19,000 blah, blah, blah opening braces, and there was 19,000 blah, blah, blah minus one closing braces. <laughs> and he's like, oh no, I have to find the missing one. <laughs> and sometimes that's what it is. A typo is the bane of our existence. Well, the uh, automatic parentheses matching the soft would be really helpful. Then, yeah. Potentially. <laughs> By the way, Sam, yeah, I just. No, no, if you get to the point where you're word counting, 3D, 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 3D. things are bad. Yeah. 3D, 3D. No. Okay, well, I'm going to hit the old hibernate button here. Go to sleep. Don't say that. Oh, okay. I know we'll bring some. Um, you want to be the same? Uh, uh, I said I, I, I dropped your name. I'm assuming she was like midnight instead of.